A survey in 2015 found that on average, a person loses over 55 days per year procrastinating. They waste around 218 minutes per day doing unimportant things. If you're a recovering procrastinator or you're on that journey to becoming a recovering procrastinator, that's four hours per day that you're losing. What's going on, winners and goal getters? Welcome to another episode of the Getting the Win Show. I'm your host, Melissa Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Um, hopefully you've been following the journey from episode one, because as I mentioned in that in that pilot episode, this will be a literal chronological process that will take you from having been a procrastinator to being a recovered one and being far more productive, getting results and keeping the promises you make to yourself and everyone else so you can walk in the ironclad self-confidence that you were born to walk in and that you deserve to walk in. So for today's episode, last episode, I talked about different ways to prioritize your tasks. So today we're still we're still on the, the mindset journey. We're still talking about getting your mind right around procrastination and around the project or baby or luxury item, as I like to call it, that thing that you've been wanting to do, but you've been sitting on, that you've been procrastinating on. So today's gonna be a little bit different. I got my handy dandy, <laughs> handy dandy tablet. I wanna you know, share some knowledge with you guys, but I'm taking it straight from the web because this is something that I wanna make sure that you guys understand and can learn as well. And again, as you know, I never share, I never share theory with you. Like I share stuff that is proven in science or methods that are proven to work. So in this case, we're talking science a little bit and we're, we're transitioning from the mindset part into the science. Cause I did mention to you guys in early episodes that I will start getting into the science and biology of things, or in this case, the psychology of things. So in today's episode, I want to find out which procrastination style are you? Which procrastinator type are you? There are five of them. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You probably didn't know that. <laughs> but there are indeed five different procrastination styles. So I'm going to go over the five of them with you guys today. And just based on, you know, the description you know, raise your virtual hand if that's you and put it in the comments too. I would love to have that conversation with you and find out from you which one, which procrastinator style that you are, which procrastinator type you are. And I'll put mine in the comments as well and share it with you here, uh, just so you're aware too. Because man, you know, those of us who are recovering procrastinators, it's interesting to learn that psychology. As I mentioned before, beating procrastination is not just it's not about time management it doesn't come down to time management we all get the same 24 hours in the day it comes down to emotion management it comes down to emotion management so today we're going to go over those five procrastination types and let's see which one you are and i'll share which one i am so i'm pulling this from lifehack.org and i'll put the the link in the show notes so you can go back and refer to it as well so you can get more information and i'm going to open it with an alarming statistic these guys shared something that amazed me it's something that you know as recovering procrastinators sometimes we don't necessarily quantify things we don't necessarily see things in concrete numbers so here's the math okay here's the math a survey in 2015 found that on average, a person loses over 55 days per year procrastinating. Isn't that insane? 55 days per year. Sure, 55 compared to 365, that doesn't sound like too much. That's still a lot. You could have been using them 55 days to do something awesome. 55 days is a lot. They waste around 218 minutes per day doing unimportant things. Okay, 218 minutes per day. If you want to break that down into hours, you're talking just shy of four hours. So you're losing just shy of four hours per day. 
if you're a recovering procrastinator or you're on that journey to becoming a pro recovering procrastinator, that's four hours per day that you're losing. So we, we definitely want to fix that. We definitely want to fix that, okay? But I wanted to open up with those numbers so you can have an idea of what we're dealing with. Insane. Like even for me, like seeing that, that was alarming for me. So hopefully those numbers help you too. But getting into the five procrastination types, let me know if this is you, all right? Put it in the comments, be like, that's me. You know, you can comment on Instagram at getting the wind show or on threads at getting the wind show or right below the YouTube video, you can comment. You can find you can find the show on YouTube at getting the wind. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell, okay? So type one, the perfectionist. Is this you? Is this you? <laughs> Do you procrastinate because you want to make sure you get every single minute detail down before you even start? Okay, so here's the, here's the important thing to know with that. Number one, there's nothing wrong with you. It, it is important to have the necessary details before you get into something because you don't want to be blindsided. That's important. I get it. I'm, I'm similar. However, there are certain things you're not going to learn or discover until you do it. Literally, like there's some things that inevitably, that's just how they work out. You, you only learn by doing in some cases, especially if, if your project, your, your luxury item is something that's of a creative nature, a book, a video, you know, you going live with something, um, something that's um, like arts and crafts, that sort of thing. There's certain things that can only be uncovered or unlocked by doing them. Like you can research a thing to death, but you got to do it at some point. You got to start at some point. And I believe this is that way. Now, this part is personal belief. This part is not science. This part is just based on the experiences I've had in my own life and with my journey with God. There's certain things that he won't uncover for you unless you start. Because with each experience in your life, you're, it's meant to build you up as a person too. So you're not only developing the skill, whatever that is that you're working at, but there are like soft skills or parts of your personality or your character on the deeper level, your character that have to be unlocked and can't be until you actually do the thing, okay? <laughs> until you actually start working. So I get it in terms of the perfectionist and here's the fear that's usually associated you know, with that particular procrastination type. It's usually fear of failure or fear of judgment, right? We want to make sure everything is right. We want to make sure everything is straight. But hey, the, the action is the action is the thing you got to do. And if you want if you want something to tweet, action is the antidote. You can quote me on that. Action is the antidote. I got that straight from the Holy Spirit Himself. He's been telling me that for well over well over nine years. Action is the antidote, okay? Write it down, tweet it, put it in threads, and just quote Melissa Tavis, like, action is the antidote. You, there are certain things you won't uncover unless you actually start. There's a, a gentleman by the name of Josh Hatch. He's the, the head of um, Harbor Solar, which is a, a solar company. He has a, a phrase. He's someone who's very type A, very forward thinking, very fast moving, you know, very productive. He gets results. And the one quote he always says is make a decision and make it right. And that's something that those of us who struggle with perfectionism, that's got to be our mantra. Make a decision and make it right. There are certain things you only learn by doing. Once you see, then you can make the adjustment if you come across something that's that's kind of wrong. And here's the beautiful thing about, you know, here's the thing that's really freeing in terms of that fear of failure. Let me help you out. Let me free you up. I'm coming close to you. Okay. Come closer. That worry that you have about judgment or failure, most folks are in their own world. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care. So your level of your standard is awesome. Let me say that. 
like maintain your standard. It's awesome because that means you do everything in excellence and that's important. But just know you don't have to constantly burden yourself or yoke yourself with that worry of judgment or failure. Make a decision and make it right. And you're going to do great. You're going to be phenomenal with it. So you're good. The next the next procrastination type is the dreamer. Okay? The dreamer. Now, this is somebody who, you know, they know they've got something they've got to do, but they prefer to be in their head. You know, they prefer to be doing things in their head for a while. And full transparency, this is partially me too. I recently took a procrastination type quiz and that was the answer that came out for me was the dreamer as someone who's a creative I'm an author so I have a very vivid imagination I'm constantly coming up with stories in my head that is that is something that takes up time for me so I'm constantly I'm always like a dreamer so here's something here's something that I learned in my experience as it relates to that because <clears throat> in terms of folks who are dreamers there's tends to be a fear of reality. You, you, you want to escape whatever your reality is. Maybe the nine to five is super boring. You just want to escape, right? Like there's some place you'd rather be up here, you know? Um, but one of the things that I came to learn as it relates to being a dreamer and how to overcome that is to accumulate enough successes in your day and in your life, because then that gives you something rooted in reality to look forward to. Notching up those wins and successes gives you a sense of confidence, number one, and that is my ultimate goal and vision with this show. That is the vision for you with this show. The more episodes you listen to, the closer we get you to that point. Notching those wins and building up your confidence. Because Ed Milet, who's incredible in the, the personal development space, look him up, the Ed Milet show, he defines self-confidence as simply you keeping the promises you make to yourself. Because self-confidence, like confidence is not external at all. Like validation shouldn't necessarily be external. Yes, it's always great to, get praise from others when you're doing something awesome. But confidence is internal and it comes from you keeping the promises you've made to yourself. And the more often you do that, the more confident you become, the more effectively you get results. Because again, there's certain things you only learn by doing. And the more often you do those things, the more, the more things you can discover, the more hacks you can discover. There may be things you discover like, oh, I can save time by doing this. Or, oh, I never knew about this app. I could actually use that. Let me try that. And then you experiment with it and you realize it's an awesome tool. Or in the midst of doing, maybe you're researching and you find a person, remember who, not how, you may find a person and that person may give you a hack or a you know, a mental perspective that you didn't have before. And you're like, wow, why didn't I think of that? And that completely changes the way you approach whatever it is that you're working on, whether that's your nine to five or your luxury item, right? So sometimes it's that. Sometimes it comes down to that. So that's the dreamer. That's procrastination type two, procrastinator type two. So if you're the dreamer, put that in the comments. If that's you, let me know. Procrastinator type three. The avoider slash self-saboteur. Is that you? <laughs> Is that you? Put that in the comments if that's you. That's up. That's up. It's all right. We'll build each other up together. We'll hold each other accountable together. So it's all good. So if you're the avoider or self-saboteur, you know, that's that's something that is usually a fear of discomfort. If you're the the avoider, you know, th there's usually that that sort of fear of discomfort, or in some cases, in terms of the self-saboteur, especially the self-saboteur, especially fear of success. Can we be can we be honest? Can we be real right now? 
there are some of us that do fear success. If that's you, don't worry. This is a safe space. You can put that in the comments too. And you may be somebody that's more aggressive or visionary and forward thinking, but like, why would somebody fear success? So let me let me clarify that for you. It's not necessarily the fear of success. It's not the success itself that a self-saboteur is afraid of. Sometimes, in most cases, I dare say, it's the fear of the responsibilities that come with that success. Because if we follow anybody that's great, anybody that's doing anything great, anybody that's successful, anybody that's wealthy, there's a lot that goes into their day. <laughs> There's a lot that they're responsible for. There's a lot that they're doing. That there are a lot of things that they oversee in order to maintain that success. Are we? Are you know? Can we agree on that? Even if it's a, you know, if it's something where it's a lot of delegation, they still have to oversee that team of people that's managing their different businesses, managing their different investment vehicles, whatever the case may be. There are a lot of moving parts. So in some cases, it's that fear of success. But again, for if that's you, if you're an avoider or self-saboteur because you fear success, let me just reiterate the reframe from last episode. Whatever that is that you're avoiding, here's the thing, you have already been affirmed in doing it. You, you get to do it. It's your thing. You're the superhero that gets to bring it to pass. If it's a nine to five project that you can't stand, I got you. I know. That's why I say you're the superhero that brings it to pass. You're the one that gets to bring it to pass. If you need help, make sure you sound off and say so. Make sure you sound off and say so. Even if the resources aren't available within your team in the nine to five, maybe it's a situation where you really are isolated in terms of getting that project done, that thing that you don't wanna do. Tap into the resources you have in your people, in your network. Even if your network is small, there's likely somebody that knows how to do what you, what you need to get done or can help you cut down the time that it's gonna to take to get it done. So if you have that fear of success, just remember this is your, this is your baby. This is something you get to do. This is something you get to be the superhero for. So don that cape and let's go. Let's get that win. Let's get that goal. All right. So self-saboteur or avoider, that's type three. Procrastinator type four, the crisis maker. Okay. If this is you, put it down in the comments. The crisis maker deliberately pushes things back until the last minute, like on purpose. Like it's one thing to be a perfectionist where you end up at the last minute because you've been deliberating over too many details or you you're so busy in your head because you're a dreamer type two and you end up at the last minute because you've been in your head this whole time because you've been avoiding reality. Or, you know, if you're type three and you're the, you know, you're the avoider, like you think you can't manage it. So you've been putting it off, you know, until the last minute or, you you know, you're you fear that success because you think you won't be able to manage all the responsibilities. So you put it off. The crisis maker is the one that on purpose intentionally puts it off until the last minute. If that's you, let's go. Put it in the comments. Let, let us know if that's you. So here's, here's the, the word for, for you if you're a crisis maker. Because this likely comes down to confidence, as I mentioned before. We talked about you know the promises you keep to yourself. This might be you if you're someone who is very fast moving. You make adjustments on the fly. You know you're going to conquer this thing no matter what. So you wait till the last minute because you know you're going to be, you're going to knock it out the park anyway, even at the last minute. And your life has rewarded you for that. Like you've seen that happen every single time you take on a project and you wait till the last minute. Ah, it's fine. Like I know I'm going to do well. I know I'm going to get it together. I know I'm going to, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. Full transparency. 
that was my life. I am someone that has procrastinated habitually on projects because I do things excellently. And nine times out of 10, the results are awesome. And the reward is that whatever, whoever I was doing the project for, whether it's academic, you know, turning it in for a teacher, you know, in terms of a client, the result was positive. The praise was there. So if that's if you're somebody that's a crisis maker because you know you're gonna you're gonna knock it out the park. Mm. <laughs> Don't be too confident though, because here's the thing too. For I exactly what I share with the perfectionist, some certain things you learn by doing. The same is true for when you wait till the last minute. Certain things happen when you do. <laughs> Remember in a previous episode, I talked about when you get started on that thing you're procrastinating on and all of a sudden life happens life be life in sometimes an urgent thing comes up sometimes an urgent thing comes up and then that sucks up more time than you expected and that might knock you off your deadline a little bit so in terms of that like revisit like circle back and revisit so here's what life hack recommends if you're a crisis maker. If you're somebody that's like deliberately waiting to the last minute, here's what life hack recommends. It says being forced to rush the work because you will perform better is just an illusion because it leaves you no room for reviewing the work to make it better afterward. Okay. So, and ironically, I mentioned this in the previous episode. But Lifehacker as a recommendation, lifehack.org, excuse me, as a recommendation says, if you're someone who's a crisis maker and you always leave work to the last minute, use the Pomodoro technique. So if you need to know what that is, go back to the last episode and check that out. The prioritization methods, check out that episode and hear the full breakdown of that. But that's a solution, okay? Don't wait all the way till the last minute because something can come up out of the blue that is priority level one, urgent and important that then overshadows the thing that you waited to the last minute to do. You don't want that. You don't want that. You want to be able to have enough time to make a decision and make it right, right? Like you still want to be able to make things right before you package it up and turn it in, whatever that is. You want to be able to make things right before you finalize your luxury item. Because remember, having a luxury item requires upkeep. If you wait till the very last minute, you don't allow yourself time for proper upkeep. That's like taking a very, very luxurious SUV and driving on a road trip with it, taking it to a car wash real quick before you get to an event that you're almost late for like you barely about to make it and then you realize that the person that's using the brush on your car didn't wash the brush and you don't find out until you park at that event that you were so that you were trying to get to and then you see the scratches on your vehicle give yourself the breathing room if you're a crisis maker give yourself the breathing room and then type number five is the busy bee according to lifehack.org the busy bee. So if this is you, you're likely having trouble prioritizing tasks because you're already doing too much. Trust me when I tell you I have been there too. Like I'm a li like there's a little bit of me in each of these procrastination types, full transparency. <laughs> I've experienced each one of these in some way or another. But if you're the busy bee, it may be a struggle for you in terms of prioritizing what's most important. So if that's you, revisit episode four, the prioritization types and tools. I talk about all of the different ways that you can get the help you need as it relates to that. Okay, so be sure to go revisit that episode. If this is your first episode, go back and go back and watch that. If you've watched it already, make sure you go back and rewatch it now that you know for sure that this is your procrastination type. And again, 
put it in the comments. Let me know which one you are. Let me know if these if these tips have helped you. Because once I learned what mine was when I took that quiz, I was the dreamer. I was like, that makes sense. And then I got the insight, like stack your wins. Stack your wins, build your self-confidence, and you won't need to escape. Any situation you're faced with, you'll know that you can handle it. Simple as that. So for the crisis creators, the ones that deliberately <laughs> wait till the last minute, it might be a fear of boredom. You might like you might like things to be exciting. You you get a rush from doing things at the last minute. Problem is you don't get the chance to adjust. So lifehack.org recommends a Pomodoro technique. I talk about that in episode four, so go back to that. And then if you're the avoider, again, you're the superhero. The truth is you actually can manage. You fear the success, you fear the responsibilities. You, you're the self-saboteur because you don't think you can manage, you can. You can get this done. And very similar to the dreamer, stack your wins. Stack your wins. Go back to episode four in terms of how to schedule out your day based on your priorities. And then if you need to build in margin into your schedule, build in margin. Because if you're someone who fears you can't manage, it's likely because you've been faced with situations repeatedly where you've missed deadlines and now you're you're in the habit of kicking yourself or being very hard on yourself for not making those deadlines. The truth is you can. It just comes down to more effectively managing your schedule and more effectively managing what I always say, emotions, emotion management. Sometimes it just comes down to that reframe. You get to do it. You're the superhero. So put that cape on. You got this. You got this. Put it in the comments. Let our community root you on as well. And then, of course, for the perfectionists, again, just start. Just start. The most effective way to take out all the kinks or weirdness the most effective way to do it is by doing it. <laughs> yes, get your research on, learn as much as you can before you start, but give yourself a deadline even for your research. That can be a difference maker for you. That can be a game changer for you. Give yourself a time limit even on the research, even on the pregame. If you follow any sports teams, particularly football, if you're somebody that watches football or somebody that follows basketball, one thing you always hear them do is talk about watching tape. But even when they watch the tape and study other teams or study the way that they played the previous game, they're not spending forever and a day watching tape. Like there's a specific window of time during their training sessions that they're watching tape. And then the coach comes back to them with the feedback. And then they get out on the field and practice. Or in terms of basketball, they get out on the court and, and practice. You only learn by doing. And it's getting those reps that make the difference. Making the decision and making it right. Making the adjustments before the clock runs out. That's important. That's very, very important. So hopefully this helped you. Again, put put which type you are in the comments below. Let me know. I would love to have that combo with you. As I mentioned, like there's a little bit of me in each of these, but when I took the procrastinator quiz that I took, it indicated that I was a dreamer. So I shared the insight that I got. So let me know what your insight is. Let me know what your aha moment is from this episode. And again, be sure to like, share, subscribe if you found this episode valuable and helpful. You can find find me on YouTube at Getting the Win. Subscribe there, click the bell so you get all notifications, all notifications. And then just follow me at Getting the Win Show on Instagram, at Getting the Win Show on Threads, at Getting the Win Show on Pinterest. But in the meantime, this is hashtag Winning Wednesdays or Winner Wednesdays. So put in the comments what your win, your midweek wins are. Let's celebrate together and Give each other that juice to pull through for the rest of the week, all right? And then on hashtag Fulfilled Fridays, we'll celebrate our end of week wins together. 
In the meantime, take care. I hope this episode was valuable to you. Let me know if it is. And hey, comment on some topics you want me to talk about. Let me know what your struggles are. Like if the stuff that I've covered thus far isn't quite what your pain point is yet, I got you. Like put it in the comments, let me know. And I'll be glad to cover those. All right. But in the meantime, take care. Have a great rest of your week. And hashtag get on that. Get on that task. Get on that luxury item. Make sure you're you're chipping away at that luxury item. Whatever that goal is, you're the superhero that gets to bring it to pass. So let's make it happen. Let's get these goals.